What is going on YouTube? Hayden back making another brand new crypto TV episode. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, as well as XLM and the S&P 500 if we have time. As you guys know here on the channel, we do a different cryptocurrency every single week, if not more during the week. And we're starting to wrap things up or getting close to wrapping things up with XLM. Uh, we do have a couple more days left in it unless we find another cryptocurrency you guys wanna see. I had a lot of people talk about Doge a lot of people talk about safe moon um, if you guys have any other recommendations definitely feel free to comment your altcoin down below and give me a little reason as to why um, moving forward in today's video though I do have some interesting plays and interesting discussions with you guys as you know yesterday's video we talked about potentially swinging uh, a buy in order for XRP and XLM as they were both um, showing some very similar descending fractals in their realm of continuing to move up to the upside um, but what was interesting was we were looking for more of a reversal. We were looking for a bottom and then, you know, swinging to the upside. I did say that it was a little bit early to call something like that as there wasn't as many technical indicators as we needed. But we did say a more aggressive approach would be to buy in long and swing it to the upside. Now, I want to talk about two of those plays that we had. One that made profit, one that hit my stop loss and, and moving forward as such. Uh, we're also going to be looking at Bitcoin and, and the other cryptocurrencies as we're starting to retrace and some interesting topics on the S&P 500 as I find fairly interesting. Otherwise, if you guys are new to the channel, definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave a giant thumbs up as this does help support the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at CryptoVOfficial. This way, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can DM me over there. Otherwise, let's jump into today's episode. All right, guys, before we jump into today's video, I want to give a huge shout out to Cosmo Masks for sponsoring today's episode. For those that don't remember, Cosmo Masks is a website that hosts their collection of pretty much NFT digital paintings. They currently have over 16,000 available on their website. And as you know, each NFT is a unique piece of art and highly collectible. And it's been very popular in the recent space. So by owning a Cosmo Mask NFT, you're actually able to accumulate a CMP which is Cosmo Masks Power every single day. And if you don't remember in our last episode of the Cosmo Masks, we actually bought an NFT painting on their site. What's cool is we were able to claim the bonus as well of 10,000 Cosmo plus the 2,000 CMP I got when I purchased one of their NFTs. So now that I have the bonus, I was able to stake it and now I'm able to receive even more Cosmo over time just by doing their staking reward. What I then did was I was able to take the 2000 CMP I received when I first bought the uh, NFT and I was able to convert that into Cosmo as well. I was then able to sell the Cosmo into USDT on Uniswap and can now withdraw it to an exchange, which is really freaking awesome. Whatever CMP I had left, I was just able to stake on the Cosmo Swap website for more CMP tokens. The whole point of staking Cosmo and CMP is to earn new tokens and eventually sell them to reinvest into a, a, you know, another NFT if you wanted. You can also unstake at any time, so there really isn't any risk at all. They have recently announced the launch of the staking and farming based on Binance Smart Chain, so we can also enjoy the cheapest commission fees right now. Otherwise, huge shout out to Cosmo Mass for sponsoring today's episode, and let's hop into the technical analysis. All right, guys, so yesterday's video, we left off talking about the good opportunity to capitalize off a run within XRP Ripple. As you guys can clearly see, I actually drew out very clearly on the thumbnail what exactly I was referring to. So as we know, we are in a major descending fractal. Almost majority of the cryptos that we're looking at in today's video, we saw these descending fractals forming. And we discussed how the fact that the XRP chart on the four hour was retesting its bottom support at the moving average, as well as its bottom support level, uh, descending level, uh, it did deem us valuable to potentially buy in for a swing to the upside. Now, what I want to talk about is I just want to quickly refresh through all these uh, markets and kind of give you guys a general overview before we dive into the video. But you can see top 10 cryptos, most everything is down. 
I want you guys to consider that. Obviously, the one taking the biggest hit is Dogecoin, of course, which might be something we have to look at. But it's at 30 cents now. Yes, it's moved up freely. We hit 40 cents, 45 cents, but we're back down to 30, down 21%. It's a very volatile move. It's going to obviously Doge, now that it's got so much volume around it and so many people interested, it's not going to fall back down to its you know original level uh, anytime soon. But I do believe that we are going to continue to head down, just like GME, just like AMC. When those coins are when those stocks moved up, um, it didn't pull back down to where it originally flatlined at. It was now officially higher than where it originally, uh, you know, stemmed from. But the same thing would pretty much be applied with Doge. So I'm not really a huge investor on Doge right now. Way too risky in my books. Um, it is obviously something to play around with if you guys are interested. But um, so moving into these markets, you can see what I'm referring to. We have XRP, we have Ethereum, we have Bitcoin, we have XLM, and the S&P 500, which is continuously pulling down, which is also of very... Uh, of an interest. Um, funny enough, on um, I'll just talk about the S&P quick, really quickly. I put uh, more money into it and I did buy at the top, but I'm really not too worried. Yeah, I could have waited maybe another two weeks for it to bottom off at 4,000, but I believe we're going to go higher and you can always, um, you know, dollar cost average. So I'm really not worried. Overall, I'm not investing in the next year. Uh, I'm investing in the next 10, 20, 30 years. So long-term approach to things, I'm not too worried about my investment strategies into the S&P 500. An average yield return of 12% on average compounded is enough for me to feel complacent buying into a market like this, even if we're at a top on the short-term daily aspect. I do believe, you know, Maybe a year from now, or maybe even in August, we should be so much higher than where we, you know, originally started from right now. And the market's already up 10%, you know, today, about 9% on average. So I'm really not worried about the S&P 500, but I do anticipate a lower uh, to move to come. Now to dive into XRP. So XRP and XLM, two coins that we discussed. Now I'm just going to slide this over just so it's closer to what we, you know, so I can flash like this between the two. Now. XLM and XRP, I talked about good buying opportunities for both of these cryptocurrencies. I bought into both. I only showed uh, XLM yesterday, uh, just really quickly, because the video was getting you know extremely long. But what I did within XLM and XRP was I bought a uh, bottom support right here. I bought in and we re re immediately started to wick back to the upside right here. So I did get stopped out at XLM, pretty much where I bought in. I really did not take a big loss in the slightest, it might've been like $100 and I'm not too worried about that. But we did buy in, we saw the retest of bottom support here, we anticipated correction. And to be honest, it did stop me out here. I'm still kind of on the fence as to whether or not we're gonna consolidate out like we've done and then pump higher. As I do believe that's still a big opportunity for XLM that not many people uh, realize just yet. So my eyes are still on XLM, they're peeled, but it did deem profitable within XRP. Now XRP, as we discussed, is also in a descending fractal or XLM is in an ascending fractal, my apologies. It's in a stair step pattern. XRP is in a descending one um, that keeps pinging off of its top resistance and bottom support. No, like I said yesterday, every time we hit top resistance, we fall. Every time we hit bottom support, we rise, vice versa, so on and so forth. Now, what's interesting is you can see that yesterday when we hit this bottom support, it was a good buying opportunity. Obviously, we would have to create a stop loss at the bottom here like we did right at about $1.24 as we discussed. And then obviously the rise went up. We retested top resistance at $1.45. We sold off and we capitalized off the run. That was the target level. It was a very easy, profitable trade. We rose from about $1.23 to $1.45. It was about a 20, like 2% uh, or 22 um, cent rise in the price of XRP. So it was, a, it was a fairly profitable run. Now we are still in this descending fractal. Obviously we're looking for higher low formations. This still very well could be the start. I mean, it could very easily ping like this and travel eventually outside of the uh, descending fractal that we have right now. But short term, as I said, an aggressive trade would have been to be buying in at this bottom support, very similar to where XLM was, which was right here, and then anticipating a rise in that, which I still think is going to happen with a within XLM, might play around with it a little more and buy back into bottom support here, anticipating another rise as we've seen before. But XRP made a good uh, good profitable trade right here, very easy, uh, capitalize off of the run. We hit a bottom support, a 
low, and then we just bought in and it rose to the upside. So really not too worried about XRP. I sold off right now. Moving forward into uh, future projections and future uh, target analysis, this is kind of where things get a little hazy right now. So you'll notice kind of where support is for XRP. It seems to have found some sort of support, underlining support, on the moving average. Obviously, we know that that is going to hold fairly uh, well, but it's only short term. Four hour is very short term. It's going to be a hard trade. I like to trade preferably on the daily, but for some more action here on the channel, I decided to do the four hour. And um, with that, I'm not really too worried. But like I've said, until we see a breach of the lower high formations, we are still considered bearish. This right now is still a bearish market. We've been bearish since the 14th. It's been about five days, no, six days right now of consolidation. Like I said, it's short term. This is a short term bearish uh, trend due to the fact that we're only on the four hour. If we go to the daily, you can see it really doesn't look as bad as we have. Yes, it's still uh, fairly, uh, you know, consolidating. It's still a bearish movement right here. We are correcting lower and we could easily fall back down to the moving average at 67 cents or to support at 93. But we just have to consider short-term four-hour movements right here. So we have to look at this. That's what I'm looking at uh, for some small day-in, day-out trades, as we discussed. So with this descending fractal, until we breach through this fractal right here, I'm still bearish. Yes, we are holding support here fairly well. That is something to consider, and I am considering that. But it is gonna. hopefully, it's going to hold here, and we can start to reverse the pattern and trend upwards, which would be nice, and then we'll buy in. But the same thing is going to apply itself as we did back here. So for moving forward, what are target movements? Um, obviously, bouncing off res uh, support here, it's not liable to be buying in. I'm not going to buy in. It's way too aggressive for me. What I'm going to wait for is if we ping off bottom support here. If we ping off here, I'll buy in for a, for a swing to the upside. If we move back up and hit resistance, I'll buy in for a short to the downside. Regardless, that's kind of where my head's at. We are using the uh, the moving average right now as a small means of support, and it seems to be holding fairly well the past couple of days. So I would like to see how exactly this decides to trend um, as it decides to close here. If we break through here, I'm immediately anticipating a correction. Obviously, this is only going to hold for so long as it is a four hour. But if it breaks downwards, we buy in here for the run to the upside. And if we hit here, we buy in for a short, which would probably land us here and maybe correct us back down to the downside. We haven't yet hit here below the moving average. Notice we got uh, recovered right here on the moving average and then we headed up higher. So there is a means of support. We've had it numerous times here. You can see kind of this uptrend that's forming. So it's a small uptrend. We can kind of draw this in for you guys just for this general understanding. It looks like it very well could be possibly creating a higher low pattern, which we need. We need that. We need this higher low pattern to send us outside. But we're not going to see that until we see confirmation of a break above this downtrend. If we can break above this downtrend and start to trend upwards, there's a good chance we could reverse out of this buy and long and anticipate a run to the upside. I'm just overall worried about most of these cryptos as they are starting to dip lower. Um, XLM, yes, is still creating a tire low pattern. Obviously, I do still think that this is a good buying level right here with a stop loss just in case we decide to breach through and start to create lower highs. But for right now, there's a good possibility of a nice bounce off of here. A lot of people are shook right now within the market, as I know, and as you guys know. A lot of people are anticipating, um, you know, just runs even higher in the market. I'm more on the conservative side where I believe that we're going to start to see pullbacks and reversals to the downside. But it's really hit or miss right now. Everything's up in the air. We have to just spend a little bit more time focusing on uh, more technical analysis and patterns to kind of for, uh, populate and uh, formulate until we buy back in. That's really really my approach to a long-term buy. As you can see, Ethereum is also hitting its resistance right here, and I don't believe it's going to hold up that well. I do believe for uh, Ethereum, it's probably going to dip back downwards, as it does seem to do that every single time it kind of plays along this top uh, resistance right here. Yes, it has broken above. I see that. I mean, we could kind of tweak this, but it's very difficult to, it, it might be something like that. It's a little bit harder, uh, but you can see what I'm referring to. I mean, let's jump to the daily and see if we get a better overview. You can see this did wick up higher, but we wicked immediately down below. So I would like to say for sure that this is the support that we're using, um, but we'll see. We'll see if it wants to reverse downwards. Markets are due to correct. I mean, I'm looking at things on the weekly, I'm looking at things on the monthly, and they all are scaling to want to pull back down. They all are extremely overbought, just like we were in 2017, and that's why I'm slightly worried and just letting it play out right now for the uh, short term. But there is you know, a pattern that we are trending inside. So we'll see how exactly this wants to play out. 
As for Bitcoin, um, looks to be correcting, like I said, and this is my biggest indicator. Bitcoin is hitting resistance. Bitcoin broke through its support level and is populating downwards. It's still in a bearish divergence. It still looks to me like it wants to reverse lower and it looks like it's just a start. And that is the biggest worry across all of crypto because Bitcoin is the leader. And if this coin starts to dip lower, the rest of the market does so. Bitcoin is down and majority of these cryptos are down as well. So we really have to consider the potential loss if Bitcoin decides to plow lower. Especially now that most eyes are off Bitcoin, the descending fractal usually leads to a bigger drop. And that's what's uh, eerie and behind me. Otherwise, guys, it's pretty much going to wrap up today's video. Um, if you guys are new to the channel, definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, leave a giant thumbs up as this does help support the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you in tomorrow's episode. Peace.